but we say we trust you. We trust you with our everything. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with our families. We trust you with our health. We trust you with our emotions. We trust you with our finances. We surrender everything else, Lord. Mercy and grace. 
I surrender I want to know you Lord I want to know you Lord. I the knowledge of you all over this room oh spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation comes reveal Jesus reveal his glory Holy I really 
want to know you. We really want to know you. Not just sing about you. Not just hear about you. Jesus, we really want to know you. And Jesus, we're nothing without you. So give us the knowledge of you. Release the knowledge of you. Cause you change everything. You change everything. Oh. Come and open up our eyes, we say. Jesus, we just want the knowledge of you. Holy Spirit. Would you reveal Jesus to us this morning? His kindness, his mercy. All my words fall short I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do But every song and you never do So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much I'm nothing Fit for a king, except for a heart singing. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one.
can shine on me to lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Stir it up, say Come on, my soul And don't you get shy on me Lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those
song. Don't you get shy or me lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. I came up here to empower it. If you're like me, when they said, Come on, my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You got a lion in Come on, deeper, sing it. Come on, talk to your soul. It wants to say, Say, Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me.
lift up your voice and shout. I tell you to lift up your voice and shout.
Press your hands forward to the person in front of you. You may not know them. You may be looking at the back of their head, but God knows who they are. He knows what they need. He knows how to meet them right where they are. He knows how to release miraculous power in this moment. He doesn't need me or anybody else that people deem to be special. All he needs is a people of faith. And so I ask you, would you pray for them? You may not know their name or their need, but just ask the Lord to meet them where they are, to touch them, to minister to them, to move on their behalf, perhaps to heal them, deliver them, provide for him, do what he does, to do what only God can do. Would you pray? Would you pray? The same sound of worship that was filling the room, let the sound of intercession now fill the room. And if you're watching online, just pray for one another. You may see a name come up on the chat and that may just, the Lord may just lead you pray for that person. Just pray for them. They may not have articulated a need and that's okay, but the Lord knows. This is how we strengthen one another. This is how we strengthen one another. Yes, Lord. Said, would you give him praise in this moment? We're going to be able to sit down in just one moment. It just came to mind to encourage you through testimony of what the Lord can do in moments like this so that we never take them for granted. Now, as I'm testifying, I want to be very, very clear that, and I'm going to say this ahead of time, not because I think that you think this, but I want the glory to go where it's supposed to. What I'm getting ready to testify is about the Lord and his power and has nothing to do with me. I want to make that clear at the very beginning because sometimes when you give a testimony and you're involved in it, it can almost seem like you're talking about yourself, but I'm talking about the Lord. I just want us to understand the power of moments like these. I don't remember the year, um, but I was in a worship night. I was not ministering. Um, I wasn't singing that night. In fact, uh, Israel Houghton was the, the worship leader of the night, and there came a moment where they asked everyone to pray for each other, the person next to you, uh, or behind you, or in front of you, which is exactly what we just did in a moment like this. And so I began to pray, not knowing the person that was right around me, but began to fervently pray in faith that God would touch them, and 
heal them and things of that nature, not really knowing what the Lord was going to do. Um, several months later, then we just kind of finished the moment like we finished now, give God praise and move on to the next thing. Several months later, I get an email that says, hey, I know you don't know who we are, but we knew who you were, and we wanted you to know that we sat next to you uh, in this night of worship with Israel Houghton, and he asked everyone to pray. And so you began to pray, and my wife was sitting next to you, and you began to pray, but what you did not know is that she had stage four cancer, and after that night that you prayed, the Lord healed her. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that in any moment, at any time, God can hear the prayer of his people. It doesn't take someone to come up on stage. It doesn't take a word of knowledge or a word of prophecy. All it takes is somebody who has some faith in a moment to begin to pray and say, Lord, would you do it? And so when I tell you that testimonies are going to come from this time, I'm not saying that out of the thin air. I'm actually saying it because I know that in an atmosphere of faith, when any believer prays for another believer, the God of heaven hears it. He he responds and he answers. So I question, would you give God praise in this moment for hearing and answering prayer? I'll give you one more, one more, just because they both came to mind. I actually happened to be at another church just a few years ago and uh, the same thing had happened in the room except this time they were praying specifically for healing in this moment and they were asking this question they said um, if you're a person that has dealt with uh, sickness or pain in your body for it was a long time like greater than 10 years or something of that nature I don't remember the exact number um, would you just stand up and so uh, there are people that stood up all around the room. I wasn't there to minister. Pastor Jason was with me in this moment. Um, we weren't there to minister. We were there actually just observing and being a part of the service. And uh, <laughs> this um, lady stood up uh, right near us. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll pray for her. And so um, I, I went over and I started praying for her. And there was a, a number of people praying and things of that nature. So it wasn't just one person, but I, I laid my hands on her and uh, this just tremendous heat just began to, to take place. And I knew the Lord was doing something significant in her body, but like, again, I wasn't there to minister anything. I didn't like say, hey, I feel like God's doing something in your body. I just prayed. I went back to my seat. Um, and then they, they asked, well, does anyone you know, know that the Lord healed you? And this lady, of course, raised her hand and testified that the Lord took away years and years of pain and then she looked over at me and it's kind of the funniest thing in the world she said you have a mighty hot hand young man <laughs> of course we know that's not my hand I can't make my hand just heat up on command right that's that's the Lord but the point is in another situation where we're just praying for one another what begins to happen in an atmosphere of faith is God begins to move in significant ways and so what I want to say in this moment I just feel led in this moment if you you are a person that has been dealing with whether it be pain or sickness for a lengthy amount of time and you've been believing God for healing would you just wave your hand wave your hand okay if, if, if someone is around you just stretch your hand towards that person right now stretch your hand to that person right now we believe God we believe God we believe God would you begin to pray now you have testimony as a fuel of your faith testimony creates faith for the future what was the future that we were creating faith for this moment right now we are believing God that there will be people who entered into this room one way that are going to lead a completely different way I declare over you this some of you who came into this room one way you're going to leave a completely different way and so father I join my faith with the believers that are in this room and the believers who are literally participating from around the world right now and we release your healing power to begin to flow throughout this room father we ask you in the name of Jesus that every sickness and every disease every pain right now in the name of Jesus would go Lord I pray that there were things that people have been dealing with for a number of years Lord we pray that right now right now not tomorrow not one week from now but for some
some people right now in this room and in this moment you would begin to show your power show your power respond to the faith of your people Lord we speak to issues that have been going on for quite some time we speak to arthritic pain we speak to chronic injury Lord, we speak to sports injuries we speak to work injuries right now in Jesus name Father I pray specifically for those in this room who are in physical pain for because of their sickness I pray that right now you would begin to touch their body and Lord I pray that from the top of their head to the soles of their feet you would remove every ounce of physical pain that which has been chronic that which they have lived with for years father we speak to it now and we command it in the name of jesus to go lord would you release your healing power now so that you may be glorified release your healing power so that you may be glorified and at the same time stir up the faith of your people lord i pray that not only would you respond to the faith of your people but you would stir up the faith of your people lord i ask you in jesus name move now by your power move now by your spirit pain we serve you an eviction notice you must be gone now your days of living in these bodies is over the spirit of infirmity we break your back and take authority over you in the name of jesus you may not have residence in these bodies any longer these people belong to the lord and they will give him the glory they will give him the glory and so father let a wave of healing begin to flow now throughout this room let a wave of healing begin to flow now throughout this room in the name of jesus we ask you lord heal your people now The river is flowing to you online as well. The river is flowing to you online as well. Your sickness, we, we, we pray in the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. Every ounce of pain, be healed in Jesus' name. That which you've been carrying in your body for quite some time, be healed in the name of Jesus. We release the healing power of God to you and we say be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name come on family just another moment just another moment just another moment I believe this is for someone online. Something just took place with the arches of your feet. You've been having chronic pain in your feet and something just took place with the arches of your feet. The Lord is healing his people. If I were you, I'd receive it. I wouldn't be wondering. I wouldn't be wondering. I'd start, I'd start walking in and I'd receive it now. You came into this room one way. You came onto the stream one way, but you are leaving this room and you are leaving this moment a completely different way. We declare it in the name of Jesus. healing is going to be as you pray. What you're actually doing is you're thanking God for it as you praise. You're saying, I believe I have it. I'm thanking him for it. And you are going to discover that in the next few moments, just like Deacon Chris prophet, or, or testified last week, and he began to talk about how he began to run around the room. And as he ran around the room, the Lord healed him. For some of you in this room, you are going to discover that as well. You are about to discover that the Lord has healed you as you praise him. The Lord has healed you as you praise him. So we're going to give you a moment and we're going to join in with you. And if you're a person who says, I'm receiving this for me and I'm going to praise him now, 
I'm going to praise him now because I have it. This is how I want you to do it. Come on, my soul. Come on, my, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy of me. Lift up your soul. If you have some pain you in your body, I, I encourage you in this moment to get up get and up praise. And praise Just wait for the testimony. Somebody give him praise now in this room. See what the Lord has done. What you've been waiting for has come to pass. See what the Lord has. If you receive your miracle by faith, just lift up a hallelujah in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you can, you can take your seats. The presence of the Lord is so strong in this place. And I'm believing that many of you in this room are leaving changed changed spirit and soul but also a changed body because the Lord is so good when he shows up everything we need shows up including healing how many of the Lord still heals that was like 30% of y'all how many know the Lord still heals in fact while we were in that time of prayer and while we've been in this service uh, one of our DGF members brother Ogden was in the Sarasota hospital because the doctors believed they saw a heart attack but then he said in the chat the doctor has come back and he said that the heart attack has disappeared did you hear what I just said in the presence of the Lord watching a stream online what the doctor thought was there is no longer there Jesus deserves the praise. No one touched him. Jesus touched him. He's still healing. And I hope you give God praise on this next part because his roommate was with him and was watching the worship and gave his life to Christ while he was watching. The devil lost again. The devil lost again. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Come on, my soul. Come on, deeper. Come on, deeper. All that is within us. Bless his holy name. It's still happening. It's still happening. He's still moving. He's still proving how great he is. It doesn't take God long. It doesn't take God long. Woo. Hallelujah. Brother Ogden, if you're still watching, we rejoice with you, brother. We rejoice with you. We rejoice with you. What he did for our brother Ogden, he can do for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The presence of the Lord. There is nothing like it. It can go beyond buildings and boundaries. It can reach you wherever you are. 
and we're thankful for the Lord's presence this morning. How many are grateful to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Yeah. We're so thankful for our team, our volunteers, all of our amazing people that uh, work so hard and diligently to create a space where we can encounter the Lord and even all of our prayer team and intercessors and pastors and leaders who bathe these moments in the times of prayer so that when you step into here, you can sense the tangible presence of the Lord. We're so thankful for all of you. We want to continue our worship by Thanksgiving in our honoring of the Lordship of Jesus Christ through generosity. And so if you'd like to partner with us this morning, you can raise your hand. One of the ushers will be happy to serve you with an envelope. That's if you're giving cash or check. But if you are giving electronically, just follow all the prompts upon the screen. Uh, you can text to give 84321, any amount. You can also give on the app, uh, the Church Center app, the Deeper app, and online. And we encourage you to do that. We want to go to Luke chapter 22 verse 7, read a few verses, make a few points, and then we will give to the Lord. Scripture says in Luke 22, verse 7, now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat it together. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. He replied, as soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asked, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. We've entered this moment of generosity, and if some of you are new to our community, yes. I know, I know that this is really, really strange. That is right before you read the scripture, but the spirit was just working on me, so it's actually my fault for not getting up before he read the scripture. But there was someone, I don't know whether you're online or in this room, the Holy Spirit was working on your heart right at the moment that you heard the testimony, not only of the heart attack being gone, but also of the person giving their life to the Lord. And you said to yourself, which is the Holy Spirit, that if they gave me a moment to do that right now, I would come. And so I don't know who you are, whether you're watching online, if you're in this room, but if you are in this room and you want to surrender your heart to Jesus right now, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. You might be online. Just, I, I, I'm literally operating by faith at this moment. I just could not escape the moment or the reality that there may be someone watching right now that literally says, whether you're online or you're in this room right now, that says, if this, if a moment was given to me, now I want to be very, very clear because this is how I heard it too. I'm just, I gave you the general moment, but this is how I heard it. You're actually, um, there's at least one person I do know of um, that literally you've, the reason why you didn't respond right here is because you've actually surrendered to the Lord before, but you've actually been away or astray. And this is your moment to come home. Don't let the moment pass you. That's the Holy Spirit working on you. Don't let the moment pass you. I don't know where you are. If you're in this room, raise your hand. If you're online, say, it's me. If you're in this room, raise your hand. Don't let this moment pass you. I'm just doing this by faith. I'm doing this by faith. And if you're on, I see your hand. I see your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Um, lady, just raise your hand one more time. I, I know you're weeping, but just I need someone to see. Okay, can you go to her brother? Go ahead. Go ahead. I just, I couldn't escape it. I couldn't escape it. I just couldn't escape it. I couldn't escape it. I had to, I had to, I had to stop. I had to stop. If you're online, you can do the same thing. Just say, it's me, it's me, it's me. You don't have to wait for a message to be preached. We, we don't do all of this. And it's the spirit of God who saves people. It's not a preacher. It's not a message. Someone doesn't need a message. Jesus preaches for himself through his spirit. If there's anybody else in this room, because... <laughs> You might have thought, okay, I don't want to be singled out, but now you know that someone else did so. If that's you, raise your hand. Don't let the moment pass you. I just want to give you a moment. If that's you, just, just one more moment here. One more moment here. Again, if 
you're online to say it's me, they'll minister to you that way. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give God praise for what he just did? Like for real, can we give God praise for what he just did? Hallelujah. I know someone's praying with her. Would you just stretch your hands? She's just in the back there. Would you just stretch your hands to her right now? I know the Lord is dealing with you, daughter. He wants you to know he's going to restore your name. Part of this difficulty here has been the tarnished reputation that you feel you have because of this past season. The Spirit of the Lord says, I'm going to restore your name. The future is not canceled because of this past season. And this is the extension of mercy and grace. Inviting you into a new place empowered by the Holy Spirit for the previous season. You tried to do it through your own strength. It's even the ways that you were taught growing up. Just muscle your way. Do it in your own strength. And this is how you get God's approval. And he says to your daughter, I have approved of you. Repent of your sin. Turn to me. And I will show you what it is like to walk in grace. By my spirit, I shall restore your name, your reputation. You think you've lost. But the Lord says, I've set up an incredible story, not just to recover all, but to do more than what you imagine. So, Father, I pray now for the infilling of the Holy Spirit to empower her to live righteously. And I thank you that you are going to restore all that she thinks she has lost. I thank you that her reputation in heaven is what matters. I thank you that even the opinions of family members, close friends, Lord, I thank you that the words that they have uttered, the thoughts, the stares, the things they have said will fall away now. Shame, we break your back in the name of Jesus. She is redeemed. The record has been washed away, canceled by the blood of Jesus. She is being made new through Christ. I thank you that you now call her daughter. And it is important for you to hear that. You are a daughter of the king. You are a daughter of the king. And you have access to all that your king has. And so, Lord, let it be so. Place a crown. Wow. Place a crown upon her head. A crown of righteousness. Lord, you shall restore in Jesus' name. If the church agrees, let it say amen and amen. Someone give the Lord praise. Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit. Can we give the Lord praise one more time? We just saw someone come out of darkness into light. Can we give the Lord praise? Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I had a whole generosity exhortation uh, planned. Planned. I'm being sent testimonies on the fly. They're coming in faster than we can even count them, uh, which I believe is prophetic, actually, for our 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 community. Um, the testimonies are going to come in faster than we can count them. Amen. Uh, someone just sent in the chat, my archers fell in April 2020 and my feet had been in pain. God healed my body this morning. Pain was trying to return to my left foot. All pain is gone now. You remember the word of knowledge given about archers in the feet? I know miracles are the norm, but let's not give God just normal praise when he does something supernatural hallelujah I just got a feeling that you're going to get interrupted during your message with more with more testimonies hallelujah he's worthy of the glory listen I had a whole exhortation plan for you points and everything gave it to the team they're going to put on the screens it was all fancy but listen i think it's just the best thing we can do right now is give in response to the presence of god his saving power his healing power so the ushers will collect those of you giving by check or by cash they will collect your gift at the end of service at the back doors um, for the rest of you can go ahead and give but i just want you to give in response to the presence of the lord thankfulness from your heart this is Lord how could I not serve you how could I not praise you how could I not worship you how could I not give you out of the storehouse of my treasure how could I not give this to you you are so good and so as the band just plays 
here, I want you to just worship the Lord as you give. As the band plays, I just, just, just fill this room with worship as you give. As you're giving on the app, as you're putting your check in your cash in your envelope, just give with a heart of thanksgiving. Oh, yes, Lord, we worship you. We honor you. This is just because he's God, just because he's good, just because he saves, just because he speaks. This is just because. This is a just because worship. Just because. Come on, give it to him while you give, while you give. Bye. 
Sometimes you just gotta sing your soul out of despair. Oh. Sometimes you just gotta call your soul to give him praise. Oh, come on, my soul. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Get up, get up. Throw up my hands, I'll praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing, healing. Three people gave their life to the Lord online. I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> so good. He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Ms. Taylor, 
Chris still in their room? Can you come here real quick? You need a microphone, too. For the moment, you can be seated. Let's keep that same posture. Let's keep your posture before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, Queen Punisha. You need a microphone too. While you're seated, you don't have to stretch them high because I know your arms get tired. It's gravity. But can you just extend your hands, extend your hands? Oh, yo. 
I said to him, it's quite the opposite. It didn't take a lot of discipline. It was love. I love Jesus. So I want to be with him. It's not my spiritual discipline. It's my love. And so I know I'm supposed to be preaching and I, and I, I probably will. But it's my love in this moment that doesn't want to leave this moment. I never want to come to church and not be able to be with him. He's the point. He is the point. So I don't know about you, but I could get used to this. take for granted how precious it is to be in the presence of the Lord who touches, saves, and heals people without a man. We've lived through an era of church where it's personality driven. The moves that we see come through an individual so I don't want you to take for granted how special it is to be in the presence of the one who is here, there, and everywhere at the same time, who has the ability to touch and heal people in the room as well as the ability to touch and heal people hundreds and thousands of miles away, to save people in the room without a message being preached and save people online without a message being preached. It is the work of his spirit. And we are in his presence. And at times we can take it for granted and I just wanted to stop and not take it for granted. So because we are in his presence, just one more time, can you give him worship in this room? Thank you, Jesus. If you were at or participating in 6 a.m. prayer, you heard words of the Lord being released that God has already been answering. And I want you in this moment and the, the interesting thing is I don't even fully know what I'm going to hear so I might start crying again <laughs> but I want you to hear what the Lord is doing as a result of his word would you come 
they, they asked me to have you come up here so for the lighting. family. Um, good morning. Can I turn to them? Uh, I'm going to lead this off with a scripture. Romans 8, uh, verse 18, NLT says, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal later. Well, you know, when Pastor William prophesied over me uh, on Wednesday, he told me that uh, God had heard my prayers and like Cornelius, that all of my prayers was answered. He's already going to do what he promised to do. And uh, for those who, you are cl- who know me close, you know, my biggest prayers has been for my sons and, and my two older daughters. They don't know the Lord. They don't know the Lord. And so, uh, but not only did Pastor Williams say that uh, it, what God does for me, he'll do for those who are connected to me. But he also said something that really hit. He said, uh, you know, uh, Deacon Claude, God was going to restore everything you lost. And he's lost a lot. But he didn't say what I lost. You know, over the last two years, those of you may not realize it, but I lost 18 family members. Nine of them were to COVID. Two of them were to murder. And, and the rest of them to other things. But God kept me. He kept me. He kept me insane. I mean, he kept me sane. I mean, he kept me sane. And even now, he's strengthening me more and more. So he said, but he's not going to, you're going to see these things with your spiritual eyes, but you're also going to see these with your natural eyes. And it's not really long because God is accelerating some things in your life. He's going to bring your family back together. And those, again, those of you who know me, and for a while, when I would mention my sons especially, I would cry. But I don't cry for them no more because I turned them over to him. I turned them over to him. And then, with all that was being said, with Pastor William was finished, we went home. There's a young man in here that I've been ministering with, not only ministering to, but he's been ministering to me. We've been praying for each other. I hadn't told you this, Pastor William, but Wednesday evening, about four o'clock, I got a text from this young man. And we've been praying about the relationship he had with his mother. With his mother. And he sent me a text. And it was emojis, crying emojis. And so as soon as I saw them, I got uncomfortable. So I called him. But he, he texted me right back, no, Deacon Claude, this is good. This is good. So when he finished, he texted me. And then we talked. He said, look. You remember how I was told you how me and my mother were struggling? He said, well, she was here. She was here, and she came to me, and she said, forgive me for the way I raised you, for the way I treated you. See, God said that what he would do for me and my family, he would do for those who are connected to me. He did it then, and he did it when, and I just want to praise God for that. And then Thursday, Thursday, me and my youngest son, our relationship was very strained. Very strange. But he called me. He called me that evening. And he called me. We got in a general conversation. Sometimes when he would get in a conversation with me, I was very uncomfortable. But not anymore. When he called me, he got to talking. And then he used a profane word. And as soon as he, that word slipped out of his mouth, he stopped. He said, forgive me. I didn't mean that. That may seem small to a lot of you, but just that moment right there gave me so much joy and peace knowing that what the Lord has promised me is already done. It's not going to be done. It's already done. An hour and a half later, my oldest son called me. He called me. He said, Dad, I said, what? He said, when is the next time you're coming this way? I said, well, I'm not sure. I said, it's according to how this COVID running. I said, but I hope to be up there next month. And he said, well, I said, why? Why is that important? He said, because I want to get you and Uncle Phil and all of us together 
let's spend some time together. My sons, neither one of them has ever invited any of my brothers or my sisters into their home. God is moving in their lives right now. He's moving in me. Saturday, I mean, not Saturday, Thursday. No, it was Friday. Friday, Gwen got a package in the mail. She got a package in the mail. It was from our middle daughter, our middle daughter. Now, you have to know her, too. When, when we were talking to her about things, she said, uh, look, y'all don't talk to me about the Lord. Say, that, that you, 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 you're too religious. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. But that day, she sent a, a, a package. When we opened the package, there were things in there, words in there that pointed to Jesus Christ, one for Gwen and one for rain. God is moving in our lives, just like the prophecy said. So you just hold on to that. You know, we, you may look at him as this little thing, but God tells us, don't forget, don't, help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Don't despise small beginnings. I see it. Even when Elijah was praying for rain, and he asked the servant to go out and see what he saw. He said, I don't see anything. But when he came back, he said, I see the, a cloud about the size of a man's fist. And so Elijah told Abraham, Ahab, you better go and run because I hear a sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And it's not just for me. It's for everyone who trusts God. Everyone who trusts God, God is going to move in your life. And just give him glory for it. In Jesus' name. just received a demonstration and a message from the Lord right there and um, I don't want you to miss it I know that there's several things that, that could have been given in that moment but Deacon Claude just preached an entire message of faith to you I want you to notice that he did not wait until the completion to testify let this be a lesson for many of us because for many of us we fail to see the completion of a thing because we do despise the small beginning and we think that it's nothing but the scripture says and I understand the context but the scripture says that the Lord rejoices at the beginning why because he knows the end so he rejoices at the beginning. What you just saw was someone who decided, I'm going to give praise at the beginning because I'm going to tell you what you're going to see. He's going to come back again and again and again. And you are about to see the progressive unveiling of the glory of God. And for many of you in this room, you need to understand. You don't need to wait until it's raining. All you need to do is rejoice when you see a cloud the size of a man's hand. What is that? That's the indication that your prayer has been heard. And for many of you in this room, the beginning of the answer hasn't been enough for you. But I want to say to you that you need to begin to rejoice now. Maybe I won't get to preach the other thing, but if I don't preach anything else, I'm going to preach this right here. Rejoice now. Rejoice now. Don't wait until it's finished. Start giving him praise at the beginning of a thing and watch him work. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What you've been waiting for has come to pass. See what the Lord has. Come on and sing in the faith. Come on, sing. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for is brought to Come on, sing it out deeper. Come on, see what the Lord has done. See what 
the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for, He's brought to pass. See what the Lord has done. I want you to do this. If you've not already done so, our brother Nathaniel Bassey released this song just a couple of weeks ago, but it was birthed prophetically on this platform during our opening. And he was helping us have worship context for what the Lord has done, but at the same time prophesying into our future about what he has done. I hope you got that. I didn't say what he will do, what he has done because it's already finished. It's already done. And if you would learn to sing this song as a prophecy and not just as a testimony alone, you would begin to see that you're gonna catch up to what he has. Some of you are about to walk into what you call the future, but what is previous to God. Why? Because he's already done it. It's already done. And so I want you, this is what my encouragement is, we're gonna sing it again, but if you've not, I don't normally do this, but if you've not gone to download it or listen to it or watch it on YouTube, you need to get it in your spirit. You really need to get it in your spirit and say, God, I'm going to sing this as prophecy. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to sing it as prophecy. I am talking about the future that I'm going to come into, which is the past that you've already done. Somebody give God praise for that in this moment. Would you prophesy to your future? Come on. See what the Lord has done. Come on, say it. Say it. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we've been waiting for is gone to pass. See what the Lord has done. Come on, get it in your future. Come on, say it one more time. See what the Lord has done. Say, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we've been waiting for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. gotten used to in I would call modern church particularly the gathering of believers understanding that there are those in this room who may not yet have come to faith and we're still going to give you the opportunity what we've gotten used to is a certain flow in which these things have to happen in this order but isn't it amazing that literally the presence of God and a testimony of the saints is the entire time? That's church. I'm not saying that we're never supposed to preach the word or, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not devaluing the importance of the word. I am just valuing the, the presence of Jesus in a room and how he can speak without words. Yeah. 
how he can begin to move on hearts. And the evidence of that is in what you've already seen today. Salvation is a work of the Spirit, not the work of a man. This is why it's not... This is why we say all the time, you hear all the time, that it's the greatest miracle. It's not a trite phrase that people have made up when they don't see physical miracles. It's actually those who understand the power of the gospel. Those who understand the power of the gospel understand the power of the miraculous resurrection from the dead to life. It happens in a moment that no man has the power to do. This is the origin of the statement that Jesus makes when that, the, the, the gentleman asks, what must I do to be saved? And he says, with men. It is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. It wasn't just a statement to say you can do anything. Not contextually. Contextually, it's men can't save you. But God can. All things are possible with him. You, you can be saved. You, you can try with the works of men to try your best, but you will fall short, which is why the rich young ruler was asking, what must I do? Because I've done everything else. I've done what everyone told me to do. I've lived how they told me to live. I've done all of these things, and there's still something in me that when I see you, Jesus, it says that I don't have all that I need. I can be rich. I can be righteous in the eyes of man, but I still don't have all that I need. Why? Because I need him. I need you. And I'm self-conscious now. I just want you to know that what we've experienced today is not just us saying we don't have anything to say or do. That's not it. As Pastor Caleb shared with you, he had a bunch of points that he was going to give you for the time of giving. And then the Lord in that moment says, hey, there's someone who I'm working on right now. And if everything was for that one this was all worth it. But this is how good God is. It wasn't just for that one. There became an overflow and there were people online who were not even in this room. I think that we have almost maybe because we're in an online hybrid space now, you, you cannot understand the power of that. Someone who's not in this particular atmosphere sitting in their home or their car or their office or an apartment or wherever they may be or in the case of Johnny a hospital room when Jesus who knows no boundaries and no distance can have someone who is simply participating in a virtual way and he, by the Spirit, begins to work on their heart and they begin to give their life to the Lord. You are in the midst of the power of God. When a word of the Lord can be prophesied to a man here on a Wednesday morning and then that very week, his children's heart begin to change. Only God can do that. And I wish that we would honor him for the level of what he's doing. At times we wait until we can see something that, that blows our mind. This should blow your mind. Salvation should blow your mind. God working on the hearts of individuals who were cold towards him should blow your mind. God healing people who have had sicknesses and pains for years and years and years when their arches fall and the Lord releases a word and by the word of the Lord and their faith he heals them in that moment that's a reason to give God praise we haven't told you all the other testimonies that have been coming in when Pastor Caleb said I have a feeling that you're going to be interrupted by more testimonies he wasn't just saying that that was an unction of the spirit to say you might want to get ready because so many testimonies are about to come in you might not be able to preach but what are you doing you are 
preaching now by giving God the glory for what he's already done. And guess what? If the testimonies are coming in fast and furious that are interrupting me, I prophesy to you and I tell you that in the coming days, testimonies are about to interrupt your life as well. You are about to see some of the things that you have been praying for, for the Lord himself as he did for Deacon Claude is turning on answers for you and answers are coming from heaven to you and you are about to see the answers to your prayer and you're going to discover that your phone is going to ring you're going to get a text you're going to get an interruption and testimony after testimony after testimony is about to happen for what is going to happen at deeper fellowship church and for all those who are connected is the recovery of the testimony servant We ought to give God praise for that. We ought to give God praise for that. It might not sound like the old time church first giving honor to God who is the head of my life to the pastor, saints, and friends, but it will be. I got to interrupt service for you and I got to tell you before you preach, see what the Lord has done. the little boy he said I'm tired of this church we're not tired of this kind of church <laughs> we're not tired of this kind of church hallelujah thank you Jesus everyone standing hallelujah If you love the Lord, would you give him a shout in this room really quickly? If you love the Lord, DGF, no matter where you are, would you give him praise? Doesn't matter what nation you're watching from, doesn't matter what city you're watching from, you are in the presence of God, and we are together now. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Praise God right now that y'all would be like, I thought you said you were going to respect our time. But whenever we're in the presence of the Holy One, something happens on the inside. And we kept singing, come on my soul. There's a lion inside of my lungs. I just wonder if there's some more people who might let out a roar. praises in this room, any other praises online, any other people that say, I got everything I came 
shoulder pain and it left right now praise God Jennifer says I brought my sister to church sick and she was limping I asked the leaders to pray for her and now she's healed she can run on her feet wait 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 did y'all hear what I just said can we give God praise like he deserves it with rheumatoid arthritis on my right shoulder affecting my neck, C5. As the prayer continued, I placed my hand on my shoulder. Immediately, I felt a sharp pain on my neck, which is very strong. Amazingly, I just felt it no more. I lifted my arm. I never experienced the pain I used to every time I moved my arm. I want to thank DFC for being obedient to the Spirit of God. God bless you all the way from South Africa. Every time you hear a testimony, you might want to give him praise right there. Because it just might mean that you're next. Here's another. Praise the Lord. The pain in my back. The cough I was developing this morning is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Jocelyn says, my sister is running through the whole house right now. She's been walking with crutches, not able to walk properly, but now she's running. Imagine trying to preach and you're getting so many testimonies you can't. Why? 
Why? Because Jesus is preaching his own message. doctor visits lined up for this week for so much pain but I've never felt so free and healed hallelujah these are literally coming from around the country and around the world live at this exact moment because of the presence of the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus I gotta I gotta because I'm telling you I, I won't stop so I'm going to Hallelujah. Anybody in this room, because you don't have the ability to, you've been healed, God did something for you. This lady is jumping up and down. Come up here, come up here. She was like, don't, don't, she was like, don't stop the service before I get to testify. Oh, I know this lady. <laughs> I got lights in my eyes. But, all right, all right. I need a microphone. We could give a microphone to Valerie. Some of y'all I don't know about, but we <laughs> Tell her. Um, when I came here, both of my knees were really, really hurting. Super, super sore. But my left knee is completely healed. There's no pain. And this one's on the way. It's like 80% better. 80%? Yeah. yeah. Lord, make it 100% in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that she came to testify about what you did in one. Now, Father, I pray that you would do it in both. So I speak to that knee pain. Now I command it to go, and I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed, Valerie. Somebody give Jesus praise. Somebody give Jesus praise. Greater is coming. Greater is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before I give this mic up, anybody else you got healed in this room? I've been telling the online testimony. Somebody else got healed in this room. Just quickly, quickly, quickly. Y'all scared? It's all good. You should give God praise, though. We understand the percentages. Ten lepers got healed, but only one came to say thank you. I don't know about you, but I'm determined to always be the one. I'm determined to always be the one. That's right. Come on. Come on. That's right. Jesus said, where are the other nine? He knew that all of them got healed. He just said, where are the other nine? Um, my sister has been sick for a while. Um, and also, she's been having so much pain in her feet. So, um, my friend Elizabeth told us, you know, why don't you come to deeper this morning? We're going to bring her so they can pray for her. So, now this morning, um, I had to support her to walk because she was limping on her feet. She had pain, literally a top pain. She was crying in the back. When you said, everybody pray for the one next to you, in front of you, she didn't understand, so I had to translate for her everything you were saying. And then I told her, you know, to have faith as they're praying for you. And then also Sister Valerie and two, three leaders went outside. They prayed with her. And then after a moment, and I touched her feet, she said she no longer has any pain at all. So... <laughs> And I told her, stand up, walk a little bit so I can, you know, see it. And then I told her, run. She literally ran back and forth outside. And when you were saying that you are giving this money, I said, I have to send it. I said a message. But when you said that, you have to come here and say thank you. So we come here to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
I don't know if you know what kind of service you just came into. Hallelujah. I literally am just like checking my phone just to see what else comes. It's amazing. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Give him praise one more time in this room. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Woo. I thought it was another testimony coming. <laughs> uh, I'm just expecting testimony from now on. I just... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Listen, this, this is a moment that we don't need to overlook or skip past. But there are people still in this room, watching online, you have not yet surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You've not placed your faith in Him, trusting Him as Lord and as Savior over your life. You have not received the forgiveness of your sin. And right now, at this exact moment, you can choose to shut the stream off, get out of here. But please, please, this is the most sacred moment for many be a moment where they are given a new birthday because they will become alive in Christ. If you're in this room and you do not know the Lord Jesus, you've not placed your faith in Him, you've not received forgiveness of your sin, this moment is for you. It's a moment where you make a decision to believe in who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God sent to die for mankind's sin that we might be forgiven of our sin and because of Jesus' resurrection, have new life in Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful gift. It's, it's a beautiful blessing. And the people you see here running and jumping and crying and praising and loving the Lord, they, this is an expression of what they have been uh, recipients of through Jesus Christ. If you're in this room and your life has been changed by Jesus, I just want you to make some noise and give the Lord praise. What you are hearing is not people who have been brainwashed to do that. We didn't have a secret huddle behind your back and say, when I tell you to give God praise, you give God praise. No, they are literally responding to the knowledge of what the Lord Jesus has done in their life. And it required them to believe in who Jesus was. It required them to repent of their sins, to trust in Jesus as Lord and as Savior. And that's all it took. You think, well, don't I got to clean myself up? Don't I got to work things out and start doing the behaviors that I've been doing before? The truth of the matter is you do not have the power to stop sinning because at this current moment, you are a slave to sin. And your master is the devil. And your future without surrender to Christ is eternal separation from Jesus. But you have an opportunity today to change masters, to come out of the influence of the kingdom of darkness and to surrender to the lordship of Jesus Christ. You're hearing me say this word lordship and it just means that you are acknowledging that Jesus now has the complete and total say of what happens in your life. You come under his rulership, you come under his authority, you choose to live according to his word, according to his command and empowered by the Holy Spirit, you become a new creation. This is important. This is important because you can receive forgiveness of your sins in this moment. And it is a beautiful blessing and a beautiful benefit. And, and that, that's what happens when you believe in Jesus. But it's not just enough just to say, Jesus, I believe in you and then live however you want. All those who place their faith in Jesus are also confessing that he is the Lord. He is the ruler. He is above. I submit my life to him. And so today is the day. Where for real, from the depths of your heart, you have the opportunity to say, Lord Jesus, I submit my life to you. I give you my entire heart, my entire life. I believe in what you have done. And now I give up my rights. I give up my ways. I give up my desires. I give up my thoughts, my plans, my dreams. And I come under your lordship and I serve you for the rest of my life. 
Jesus said, if any man wants to follow me, he must first deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. This is important. So today, you are counting the cost. This is not a moment where you just make an emotional decision and say, you know what, the music is good, the atmosphere is good, I think Jesus is a good idea. No, 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 don't do that, friend, today, lest you be deceived. Today is a day we are surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You are coming under His rulership, believing in what He has done, believing that He has forgiven your sins, that He has paid the price for sin through His death, that He has arose again to give you new life, and that if you come under His Lordship, you believe in Him as Jesus, you will be saved. This is the promise of the Scriptures, and all of us in this room have experienced that. So if you're online and you're here today, I want you, I appeal to you, by the Spirit of God, surrender to the Lord Jesus. Believe in what He has done. Receive Him as Lord. Receive Him as Savior. Be made new by the power of the Holy Spirit and receive the gift of eternal life. The truth of this moment is, is that eternity hangs in the balance. This is not just about how good your life is going to be here on this earth. This is your ability to leave this room with sure confidence that no matter what happens in the next five days, five months, five years, or five hours, you know that because you have given your life to Jesus completely and totally, you will spend eternity with Him. Here's the reality. If you do not do that, you are still destined for a future without Him. An eternity of eternal torment. Separation from God. And friend, I do not want that for you. Hell was not created for you. It was created for the devil and his angels. It was not meant for you. So all you have to do today is surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Believe in what He has done. And you will be saved. If you're in this room and that's you, on the count of three... I want you to boldly, because you've counted the cost, you've seen that now I am giving up my life, my rights, my desires, my dreams, I'm, I'm giving my life fully to Jesus, you've counted the cost and you say he is worthy of this type of life, of this type of surrender, me giving everything to him, I'm tired of doing it on my own, I'm tired of doing it in my own strength, I'm tired of trying to live right, no, I want to now live for Jesus by the help of his spirit, if that's you on the count of three, I want you to slip that hand up boldly, just saying, I know I'm placing my faith in Jesus, and if you're online, I want you to put hashtag uh, in, the, in the comments, hashtag I met Jesus. That's just your way of acknowledging to say, I'm taking Jesus for real. I'm surrendering to his lordship. I'm believing in his sacrifice. And I want to receive the gift of eternal life today. On the count of three, I want you to do that in this room. If that's you, listen, you have a witness of miracles, signs, wonders, testimonies of brothers and sisters in this room. Don't leave this moment unsure about your eternity. Leave this moment sure because you place your life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and believe in what He has done. If that is you in this room, on the count of three, throw up that hand. One, two, three. Throw up that hand if that's you. You want to place your life. I see the hands. I see the hands. Come on. It's not too late. It's not too late. You still have time. Family, we talked about this being the greatest miracle, right? People coming under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, believing in Him, becoming saved by faith. I saw those hands, and I'm believing there's more of you online. Now, if you put up those hands, I want you to pray this prayer with me, not because the prayer saves you, not because it has any power other than it's giving you language for the faith that is in your heart and the submission to Christ that you are publicly declaring. If you are a believer in this room, if you're an unbeliever in this room and you want to be, be a believer in this moment or you, you want to place your faith in Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Everyone repeating after me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin and I renounce all works of lawlessness. Lord Jesus, I surrender to your Lordship. I give you my life. I give you my heart totally and completely. With your help, I will live for you for the rest of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to live righteously. I give you everything in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen and give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise.
Hallelujah.